what's going on everybody it's childish we're back at it again we got the next theory crafting thursday video for y'all today thank y'all so much for tuning in if you are new to the channel welcome to the channel the theory crafting thursday series is one that we started last week uh talking about some uh different concepts of the game that i discuss in my epic fail community uh, as you guys know we have a four guild community um, and within that we have a channel called epic fail evolution where the guildies are allowed to discuss various basic and advanced concepts of the game so that we can all improve and all get better and i want to uh create this series so that you guys can get a little piece of that and we can debate and discuss on what we think is optimal so that we can help each other out and improve our progression okay um the topic of today is going to be destroy runes uh what are they what's going on with that right um as you guys know if you're not familiar with this uh with regards to this option here in the settings on the health function uh you can literally find out anything and everything you want to know within this game one of the spots here um is the uh, rune set here so we're actually going to go to that so you guys can see exactly what the uh destroy runes are here so uh, destroy runes, right? One of the one of the more recent uh, rune sets that got you know put out there, but again, not a lot of people utilize it. Um, I think it's a very uh, rare thing to use, but um, hopefully by the end of this video, we'll, we'll be able to open your eyes as to possibly potential combinations that you can utilize with this setup. Okay, so destroy runes. When equipping two pieces, right, the enemy's max HP will be destroyed by 30% of the damage dealt, and this destroy effect only reduces the max HP. In addition to that, the reduced max HP cannot be recovered until the battle ends. So basically, uh, we can destroy up to a certain percentage of the max HP, depending on how many sets we have. And the total amount uh, that we can do is going to be 60% of the max HP. Okay, we cannot get, we cannot go below 40% of the original value of the unit of the enemy. Okay, so of course, uh, as I stated, we can only do 4% when we have one subset of the destroy uh, uh, put on the unit. We can amplify that by putting multiple destroy rune sets. Two sets is going to give us 8%. Uh, three sets is going to allow us to destroy up to 12%. Okay. In addition to that, this can't be applied to the bosses. So this is only going to be really taken advantage of in a PvP setting uh, because of the fact that we can't use this on uh, particular bosses and, and generally with regards to other pve settings uh you know we're going to be able to take those units down relatively quickly um now let's go ahead and just kind of talk about um the destroy runes and who they can be used on uh i think the the, the kind of understood concept is we're looking at you know assassin type dps over bruisers i think what the, the recommendation is going to go lean over to the bruisers uh reason being is these are the units that can be relatively tanky but still do a decent amount of DP, dps and, and some of them can, pot can potentially even self-sustain right they, they have an opportunity to stay uh, stay long in the fight and, and, and keep themselves alive. Um, why is the assassin, you know, type of DPS not really uh, utilized when it comes to destroy runes? Uh, I feel that because of the fact that they are relatively squishy, while you can uh, destroy, you can use them to destroy a certain percentage of the person's DPS. Um, Remember, keep in mind that you only can destroy 4% of the max HP. So even if you have an assassin type unit that can do uh, 60k damage, you're only going to be able to destroy, you know, 4% of that. So if you're going to utilize this uh, for something that's going to be played in the long game, uh, I believe that you should probably consider units that can last in the long game. And you guys know yellow type units, um, depending on how you set them up with regards to Guild Wars, they're going for that, you know, one hit, two hit combo with regards to your combos, but it's generally speaking, they're not going to be lasting, you know, all day. This is going to be something you're going to be using for your quick game or short game, right? So let's kind of, let's kind of take a step back and let's kind of do a little example here. I'm going to use Leica as an example. His hit points are like 27-ish K. Let's just round up to 30. Uh, let's round up to 30 for this one. So let's say uh, I have a Leica and the enemy has a Leica, right? So the enemy's Leica, we'll say, has 30K HP right um so if we're talking about the destroy set you know one set of destroy runes will destroy four percent of the enemy's max hp then 44 percent of the 30k is going to be 1200 hp right so uh when we think about the bruisers and what they can do uh with regards to this game you know they're they're they definitely can't do the dps of like you know yellow yellow type units but they can still put out some numbers uh, some of my bruisers do anywhere from 10k upwards of 20k uh, my kumar does upwards of 20 to 22 to even 23k depending on the um you know the unit that they're hitting 
uh, depending on how it's built, right, it can do a, a good amount of damage, right? So what that means is, from my perspective, if I was using a, let's say if I was using a bruiser, um, let's say I was using my Kumar, and he was uh, specced with a destroy set, right? If I'm doing uh, 10 to 25k DPS, 30% uh, of the damage dealt to the enemy would result in about a damage range of about 3,000 to 7,500 damage, right? In addition to that, right, where this this prediction is pretty is a pretty wide range uh, because of the fact that uh, you know the new addition of the grindstones and a chance and having the ability to improve the effective HP of the unit that's all going to come into play, regardless of the fact that I can do that amount of damage. Uh, the only amount of damage that I can destroy is that four percent of the enemy's max HP if I'm using one subset. Um, Aeolic, yeah, I only can destroy 1,200 of the HP, right? So if that is the case, if that is the case, my question for you guys today is, and this is how we're going to be finishing off all of the Theory Crafty vids, uh, I'm always going to leave you with that question to kind of think about. If that is the case, knowing that you can't destroy as much damage as you would like to, could we make an argument for making some of our units that we generally run a, a basic, like, Attack or damage HP, like 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 a like a little mini hybrid. Could we make an argument for making them a little bit more tanky and doing a little bit less damage? If the optimal goal, if the goal is to consider it for a potential um, Guild War unit, you know, offense or defense, but more notably uh, defense. Okay. And why do we talk about Guild Wars? Uh, as you guys know, with regards to arena, uh, arena versus Guild Wars, the arena has that uh, concept of the tower. The Guild Wars does not. So. You can essentially get into a fight with somebody and go back and forth day in and day out because of the fact that uh, you can't eventually draw uh, because there's no tower, right? Having that concept of the destroy runes is not going to allow your opponent to um, potentially, you know, outlast you and, and keep it going. So uh, that's why we're talking about the destroy runes uh, today. So um, let's take a look at some basic units that you guys already kind of know about and then let's go ahead and brainstorm. Um, some potential units and possibly some rune builds uh, that we can go ahead and utilize. I'm going to leave this wide, wide open while some of the units that we mentioned uh, today are going to be from the community. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from everybody as far as the units that they feel that this can work out. So let's go ahead and start out with probably the one that needs no introduction. Uh, you guys know what it is, if I can load it up here. Camila, okay, Camila, the Water Valkyria, um, an amazing unit. Uh, if you haven't seen... Uh, it's passive, reducing the uh, critical damage by half, improves and removes the weakness on the effects. Okay, additionally heals 10%. With the with the mechanic like this, this unit is going to last um, a very very long time. And so if you've seen out there in the meta, people building, you know, back in the day it used to be like crazy yellow style, you know, ones, but now people are incorporating a hybrid format, trying to get that good damage, but also have a uh, good HP so they can outlast uh, for a while. Um, so people, you know, initially were using Violent Nemesis, you know, for the very long, you know, for the longest time. And, and most of them are still using it to this day. But however, people, now that they're starting to get these destroy runes and starting to get some really good stats on them, they are realizing that when it comes to Guild Wars and utilizing units like this in the Guild Wars setting on defense, they can take, they can get value out of a unit that like this is going to be providing um, that destroy mechanic on that. Um, its damage multipliers is really, really strong if you've seen it. So this is a really good candidate uh, for that destroy set, right? Uh, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at one that obviously no everybody knows about, but this is not something that we think about because, uh, you know, this is something that we will never, never get, right? <laughs> really get. Okay, Artemil, the Light Archangel, the passive allows you to counterattack the attacker when your allies attack with a critical hit and increases the attack bar by 15%. What this means is you're getting a ton of additional turns per round um, that are generated through your opponents. Um, so you are going to get multiple opportunities to destroy that opponent's uh, uh, damage. So this is another common unit that you see a lot of people use with regards to the destroy set. Uh, really, really prime candidate, right? Uh, next one, next one, next one. Now this one... Uh, I think we got two units that can fit the bill here, but again, this is all up for debate. So put your comments down below, whether you're nay or yeah on this. Um, the Monkey King group. I feel that the uh, Wind Monkey King and the Fire Monkey King uh, are, are definitely prime candidates of that. Why is that? Uh, this particular unit has an ability that reduces the damage by 25%, making him a little bit more tanky. This allows you to play with his rune builds. 
um, to, to make him even more stronger of a hybrid. In addition to that, he counterattacks with a 25% chance with the allies attack. What that means is, just like the uh, Light Archangel, getting yourself more opportunities to deal more damage and essentially break the unit, break the unit's HP is really darn strong. Because of the fact that we already looked at the example prior to, we realized that even though we might make this unit more of a hybrid, we don't need a lot, a, a, a ton of DPS um, to get the desired destroy effect that we're going to be using if we're utilizing one subset. So this is one of those units that we can play around with uh, either more of an offensive hybrid or defensive hybrid because of its passive. And because of the fact that we're having all these additional attacks, we're going to be able to uh, build compositions around this um, to allow us to really bring down the opponent's HP. Uh, I think fire the fire one can also fall in this concept if I can click it. There we go. Fire one here. Now, I think the wind one is a, is a little bit better, right? But the fire one here is really, really unique. This one has the uh, counters that allows him to increase his attack value by 20% uh, up to 10 times every time it's hit. So if we built it in more of a tanky fashion and we're going for that long game, we know that they're going to be hitting it more and we know that we're going to be getting these uh, triggers climbing up, right? So essentially, uh, we're going to have ourselves uh, a higher amount of attack power in the mid to late stages of the fight. That being said, uh, because of the fact that this one also has that second skill that's going to allow it to give it a small heal, um, it gives it it gives us more of a self-sustaining effect. But of course, we can play around with its uh, kit with the runes that we decide to use, so that we can get ourselves a lot more DPS um, and a lot more potential to to take advantage of this destroy set. Because again, I think it's I think it's passive allows you to get go a little bit more on the tanky side and take advantage of a subset destroy. However. Um, because of the fact that it doesn't have a mechanic like the Wind One, um, it's it's kind of up for debate. I feel like the Wind Monkey King is a prime candidate. The Fire Monkey King, we can make an argument for. We can make an argument for. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, I, I I think that we can incorporate the uh, Beast Monks into this mix. Okay, and if I can find them here, um, if I were to make two recommendations, right, as far as the who would be potentially destroyed. Now, keep in mind that we're being very very broad in our recommendations. Um, while we make an argument that, you know, running will uh, or, or some other uh, subset might be a little bit more optimal, we're simply talking about units that could potentially fit the bill on a destroy mechanic or who can take advantage of the destroy mechanic because of their kit, right? So the wind one and the fire one, Ritesh and Kumar, uh, both have uh, a good amount of DPS and an ability that's going to meditate, that's going to uh, give themselves a way of keeping themselves alive. So because of the fact that their uh, damage is based on max HP um, for both of their main skills, this means that they can stay relatively tanky. You can build them tanky and still take advantage of the destroy set. Keep in mind that while we like to build these units sometimes in a in a um, in a DPS based faction, um, we do see time and time and again units like the Ritesh built in a more of a speedy support type fashion. And because of the fact that he still does really good damage based on his max HP, we can still um, hit that quota of the 4% of the enemy's mass HP uh, with the destroy set and get the job done if we if we so choose. It is an option, wh whether it's uh, 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 open for debate on the you know will versus destroy, that's all right. We're just throwing it out there as a potential option for the destroy mechanic, okay? Um, another one that fits the bill in the, uh, in the Nat 5 world, we have ourselves the Wind Panda, um, an amazing unit out there, right? Defense leaders go 44%, a skill that's going to and generate additional turns every time it's attacked. So again, uh, similar to um, actually kind of a little bit of concept with regards to Wind Monkey King, the light, you know, Argento. This this particular unit has a way of generating uh, more turns, right? The Wind Monkey King is going to get more turns when they uh, when the opponent attacks their their allies. This one is going to get more turns when they attack him, right? And so with a with a unit with a with a passive like this. This is going to allow us to get a ton of turns and be able to take advantage of. Now, one thing that people might have uh, not realized, um, you know, this particular unit has a multi-hit effect. You might be thinking, well, if he has a multi-hit effect, can he take advantage of hitting, you know, the opponent three times and destroying the effect three separate times? Um, I think that was, I think it was broken when it first got introduced and then they fixed it so that the multi-hit effect won't take, you won't be able to take advantage of a multi-hit. So you don't see a lot of people utilizing multi-hits on the destroy set because they're like, oh yeah, they can, they can use the, 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 the multi-hit effect to, to gain more, um, you know, destroy type of mechanic, but it's only going to be one time. 
even though this unit hits three times. So because of the fact that this guy does great damage uh, with his skill uh, based on defense and the passive is going to generate additional damage proportion to the defense whenever you attack. I mean, this is going to put out some good defense, some good DPS on that first skill. And you're going to be able to, again, make him extremely tanky and get those turns generated because eventually they're going to have to attack this opponent. I will be the first to admit that I have uh, seen the wrath of the destroy subset uh, Fen Yang and I got wrecked. <laughs> I got wrecked. So um, now there's a there's a multitude of units that we can still include in this mix, but these five are probably five of the more uh, common ones that you will see in the game now. Let's push that aside and let's talk about the recent changes when it comes to uh, some of the units that, that recently came on board, right? We just had this big patch and we had uh, a multitude of units, in particular two, that definitely made a change. Um, some may say change for the better, some may say change for the worse, but I think these now can be considered as potential uh, 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 candidates for the destroy set, okay? Uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and hit up that Rakan. Okay, Rakan, as you guys know, running the uh, first skill based on attack power. We got the buff, and then we got the skill uh, based on the uh, max HP. So again, similar to the to the Beast Monks, this unit is going to be putting out damage based on its max HP, and this is great because um, we're building this unit on max HP, which means that we're going to make him uh, relatively tanky. He could be tanky, but still do extra DPS. And because of the fact that this skill now has a 30% chance to attack the attacker when the skill is down, that's going to be giving us an opportunity to generate more DPS and give ourselves potential to use more destroy effects. So the question for you guys is, uh, do we still stick with that violent set or do we incorporate a vampire set like a vampire destroy on this so that we can get more value out of the destroy set and give Rakan more of a self-sustaining feature to make this work, right? Because again, we have other units like the Beast Monk, um, the, the, the Wind... Uh, sorry, not the Wind Panda, but uh, Camila. We have other units that can self-sustain, have a mechanic that's going to give them that heal effect. Rakan doesn't have any type of heal, but we're able to get those uh, extra turns generated from his third skill. So because of the fact that his skill is going to be hitting hard, and we're going to hit that cap pretty darn hard um, when it comes to uh, the 4% the of the max HP, do we make an argument for using a Vampire set now? Is a Vampire set good, or is a Violent set good? Do we want the Collapse to be on cooldown now? Uh, longer, or do we want to have a violent set that could potentially proc more and and have that collapse up, um, and which is going to take away from our ability to use it as a counterattack? That's something to think about. Let me know what your feedback is on that. Go ahead and put that in the comment section down below. Okay. Next one up, we have ourselves Leica. All right. This is one that I was really excited about, but I didn't have the initial destroy rooms to test it out right away. So Leica, the big change. You guys know what it is. Um, Attacks the attacker and inflicts the damage proportionate to your attack power and, and stuns with a 50% chance. So 50% chance to counterattack and stun. Uh, this is going to be generating, again, a lot of damage. But as you guys might have guessed, uh, because of this concept, we have to keep in mind that this unit needs to be built in a in a damage type fashion. That's why we're talking about bruisers so that we can outlast the opponents and, and, and make this you know be a, a candidate for us because of the fact... So th this unit here, right, it, it makes no sense to run a YOLO type of Leica on a destroy set because, again, while they may be able to hit us and counterattack us, we can't ta we can't counterattack if we're dead, right? So this needs to be built in a, in a tankier fashion. And because of the fact that his damage multipliers are extremely good, if you guys are not familiar with this unit, uh, this skill, Justice, this has one of the highest damage multipliers in the game that can potentially improve... Um, when uh, you know your opponents die, I mean this this can make this for a really nasty skill. Of course, we're talking about the counterattack and the first skill, so this is the this is the skill that's going to be doing it. This does have a good damage multiplier um, for comparison to most nat fives in the first skill, and uh, again, I feel like we're going to be hitting that destroy uh, that that cap that threshold of the four percent enemy max HP, even if we play around with the hybrid setup. So, is this a candidate for a, a vampire set? I believe so, because we're going to have ourselves more opportunities to, uh, a higher opportunity that we're con to go ahead and and uh, counterattack and get our life back. However, um, do we make an argument for violence set because of the fact that this second skill is on a two-turn cooldown when maxed? So if we're, if we're potentially uh, considering this unit for an offensive um, setup, uh, in addition to using defense, do we make an argument for violent? 
or vampire. Put your comment section, put that one in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to hearing back on that, okay? So those are some of the units that got added on. Um, but now let's talk about some units that people don't really think about that uh, potentially could be a possibility, right? We're just brainstorming here. This is what we do in the Epic Fail Evolution chat, okay? Uh, you guys know all day, Veramos has been uh, promoted as the unit to be built on Violent Nemesis to get those turns quickly so that he can uh, cleanse himself, heal himself, and, and, and go ahead and finish off and, and keep on attacking the unit, okay? We understand that when we built it relatively fast, uh, we built this one relatively fast and relatively tanky, so it fits the bruiser type of setup. And it, and, and the fact that he is built on speed, too, uh, makes this a great, great unit, right? Because we want, we want to get more turns per round, more than our opponent, and we want to have more opportunities to potentially use its kit. Now, uh, this skill or this, this, this concept of destroy, uh, I think it can work uh, on this unit. Uh, my recommendation, or sorry, my guildie's recommendation on this one uh, came from Fua. Since the skill is based on, the second skill is based on max HP and the first skill is based on speed and we're building this unit generally with speed and HP, we're going to be able to hit our DPS uh, relatively good uh, on our units and, and, and hit that quota for that, for that 4%. Um, again, why would we consider using the destroy type effect? Because again, it has a cleanse and it has the ability to improve the HP. It's not a lot. But it does have that self-sustaining type of feature, so it's something to consider. Do you think uh, we're we're correct in saying that, or do you think this is not even an option? Put that in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to hearing on that, okay? So now, that's it for the natural five stars that we're going to be talking about. There is a multitude of ones that we could be mentioning, but to keep this video uh, uh, not being like an hour and a half long, I, I just want to kind of open your eyes as to far as some of the units that we have talked about in our community that we feel that are uh, kind of fit the bill on that one. Um, here's the deal. All the units that we talked about, uh, we're talking about we're incorporating units that are uh, relatively tanky, that can do damage, uh, and some of them based on max HP and have a way of self-sustaining. So keeping that in mind, could we make an argument for support units? Could we make an argument for units, support units or healers that do damage based on max HP? So let's take an example. Uh, let's go ahead and start out with uh, some of the more common ones that we do see on the on the defense here, or at least at this particular unit we see on the defense. Um, some of his sisters, um, possibly not, but this first unit here, Iona, um, a really really nice unit. You know, has that heal, has that revive, um, but more importantly, has a skill that's based on the mass HP. And with her base HP being in that 12k range, one of the top base uh, HP units out there, uh, one of the top units with the highest base HP. Um, this allows us to take uh, a, a, a really good advantage of HP percentage runes and get her HP really up there. Generally speaking, I see a lot of the Iona's out there sitting around 40 to 45k HP. So with this, that keep in mind, um, with the unit that's not built around crit damage, she still can do, you know, 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9k I've seen Iona's do, right? Really, really good DPS. So because of the fact that she can do damage... Uh, based on the max HP, which is how she is built. She stays tanky, but can still bring down the opponents, uh, destroy the opponent's HP. Um, one of the more common units that you potentially already have that you could use um, is Rena. If you guys remember in the uh, arena setting, but not, not really too much talk about Guild Wars, but in the arena setting, uh, Arena was you know used in a lot of different stall type uh, uh, setups with the guard when the, when it was a big big stall meta. That's kind of pushed over now, but people still use it every once in a while. A lot of people were focused on getting just the raw stats to keep her very very tanky and and and, and very high resist um so if that's something that you have if you have yourself a uh a, a arena sitting around where some you have some destroy runes that have those stats that you're looking for then yeah this could this could potentially be another uh another uh, unit that you can utilize um let's see and so next up we got ourselves molly uh molly being the light mermaid a prime candidate for the guild wars I see it a lot of times in the Guild War defense. Uh, another unit that is, has that skill based on max HP. Uh, she has a skill that's going to be removing all harmful effects and creating a shield based on the uh, unit's level. In addition to that, being able to increase the chances of Galanthi for 20% and improve the uh, lowest um, HP ratio by 10% on an ally by 10%, this is a unit that can self-sustain. So this could be another candidate uh, in my eyes, as well as what the Fua's eyes. Uh, and then, of course, we got ourselves better. 
being able to do damage also on max HP, having that skill that's going to either heal or revive, and then having the uh, group here with the critical reduction and the immunity. Uh, a unit that's going to allow them to self-sustain or using it in combination with another unit, um, it's going to allow you to, to stay alive longer, right? So I, I like I like both of these uh, in this particular concept. I mean, these are one of the these are probably two of the most common ones. You really do not see uh, the wind, water, and fire when used in the meta, um, but uh, if you did, were fortunate to use these ones because of its uh, second and third skills, the kits that they bring, I do feel that these are, are, are really good candidates for it. All right, next unit that we're going to be taking a look at is probably one that you will not see on defense, but I want to kind of give them an honorable mention because I do feel that they're pretty unique units and could do uh, can do wonders here. So this is one of my uh, one of my favorite monsters um, that I have. I really like its mechanic, and I want to take a look at it here. Trevor. Uh, what an amazing unit here. Fire Neo Soul Fighter. We got ourselves a, a, a skill that's going to be providing that attack buff. And then we got a skill that's going to be providing critical right before attacks. And then last but not least, the, the big uh, the big whammy here. Um, as the HP decreases, your attack power will increase and you'll receive a little bit more damage, right? So what this allows us to do with a unit like this, right, is build it in a hybrid format and still do a good amount of damage when the uh, unit is, is low on the HP. So... Uh, with that in mind, could this be a candidate? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Could this fall into the mix? Could we make them even more of a hybrid format uh, because we're going to go ahead and, uh, um, you know, gain more attack power similar to that fire uh, monkey king and be able to do some damage? Um, I will say on my end, I do feel that it could be a candidate for a destroy set, but I think it has to be paired up with a vampire set, right? Uh, like I said it before and some other things, uh, some other units out there. Um, this is one of those units that can, it could definitely get um, really close. Uh, you know, when it gets low HP and you want it, you want some kind of a, you want a mechanic that's gonna allow him to uh, get that HP back uh, really uh, quick. And because of his multipliers on how this third skill works, um, I feel like that's, it's a great candidate for like a vampire destroy set. But we'll leave that up to you guys. Let me know what you think on that one. Um, last but not least, uh, I want to give a shout out, another honorable mention to a, a person actually outside of the guild. You guys are familiar with him. Uh, former M Man Crush Monday guest, former Educate Nominate guest. We got Vane Solidor. He is the king of, of setting up really an orthodox build on three star four star units because of the lack of five star units that he initially had when he got first got started he did all the work grinding and now we're uh he, he wanted to uh you know grace us with another unit that could be potentially one to consider um that one is gonna be where is he hiding where is he hiding that one is going to be a tractor, the water Frankenstein. So you guys remember, we recently just had a secret dungeon on this one. Uh, first skill, uh, hammer punch, right? Being able to stun the opponent with a 25% chance that can improve to 45% chance. And then uh, has an ability to allow him to do an additional turn if the unit is doesn't have any harmful effects. An AOE provoking skill. And then a, uh, a skill that's going to improve the attack bar by 30% each time you are hit with a critical hit. So again... You know, going on that concept, this is similar to that Wind Panda, um, but in a farmable, a, a more farmable common unit that you can utilize. This unit here can't be def defense broken and can has a way of generating additional turns, right? So if we're playing around with this in an offensive setting, um, with a destroy set, you know, a, a unit that's based on defense that can't get his defense broken, which would reduce the amount of damage he would do, this guy is always going to be putting out some good numbers and staying relatively tanky. Um, so could we make an argument for a destroy set, uh, potentially a mixture of revenge and destroy, depending on how you want to go. Why revenge? We have that stun like mechanic on the first go and we have our way of, uh, AOE, uh, uh, provoking. So being able to have them come at you and then another potential to, uh, hit them back again and stun them. Um, I think that's something pretty unique to point out. Um, again, we'll, we'll do another clip from, uh, a, a member, uh, one of my members, uh, in the Epic Fail Alpha community, Topa V. You know, when we're talking about the concept of the story set, you know, we've been talking about specific units um, that we would build. The question that I ask you is, is this something that we could potentially build uh, on one unit and leave it at B? Or if we're trying to incorporate a different setup with regards to our Guild War defense, should we consider building this 
uh, making a team, you know, around multiple destroy units. So building a Guild Wars team that is obviously going to be built is going to be a Bruiser type team in a self same fashion, and have multiple units to build in that um, in that destroy uh, type of mechanic. Uh, my personal opinion, I think uh, that is would be a great option if you're going to go for that route because of the fact that uh, you can. Um, because of the fact that the uh, the skill is based on 4% of the max HP, if you decide to go with like a double destroy or triple destroy, you can accelerate the rate at which you, uh, you know, take down the max HP. However, because of the fact that you take, you, you, you use multiple sets, you take away the fact of using some primary sets, more notably a vampire set or a violent set or something of the sort that's going to uh, uh, provide you a way of, uh, you know, generating additional turns or... Or generating a way of self-sustaining if, if your unit doesn't have a way of self-sustaining, um, uh, you know, in its kit, so to speak. So that was a really interesting point that I want to point out from Topa V. Um, you know, if you want to set up that, um, you probably should build a comp that's revolving around a story and, uh, you know, a, a composition with two units or so uh, can eventually win by attrition. So really, really good point in that aspect. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it guys with regards to the Stereo Captain Thursday. We're being very, very broad in uh, destroy runes and potential units uh, that you can use with them. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your concepts. Again, destroy runes is one of those controversial topics that we really don't talk about. But I want to put it out there because at the end of the day, it comes down to not what you got, but what you make of what you got, right? So some of us haven't been fortunate with the top end units. Some of us haven't been fortunate with the best violent revenge runes. Or whatnot, and we got to make use of some of these uh, uh, runes that we have that just have great uh, raw stats, right? Uh, for example... Destroy rune here. I mean, this is one of these runes that I've had for for quite some time here, and you know, unit runes like this. Uh, I mean, this is this is something that I could definitely uh, we can incorporate into one of our units if we can find a unit uh, or another rune of this particular caliber and really make up for the lack of uh, 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 rune builds and other aspects of it. So I'm really looking forward to hearing this from you know back from you guys. Let me know what your feedback is on this. Uh, put it down in the comment section down below. Again. Thank you guys so much for your support. We had an amazing response in this Theory Crafting Thursday uh, video from the previous week. Looking forward to hearing what you say on this week, all right? That is it. I am done. It's your boy Childish, Childish Players, checking out. Take care. We'll see you guys next time. We're out.